When a person is using the world in such a way, <laughs> and he learns Torah to elevate his level and to purify the body, so both channels are being elevated. The happiness of the human being. Let's talk a little bit about it. Who can tell me what happiness is? Hearing a joke and laughing for a minute, is that happiness? Making a lot of money, it's happiness? Seeing Ashgacha of Hashem is happiness? See the miracles that Hashem does for us, is that happiness? Having a child, is this happiness? I'm sure many people will define happiness in a different way. Now you're going to hear what the Torah called happiness. What's happiness according to God? <laughs> happiness means that Hashem light, He is light like a projector on your soul. Reflects the spiritual light, not physical light, spiritual light on your soul. This is an unbelievable feeling. Spiritual pleasure. You're in a different, mo if, a different planet. You feel like you're in a moon. You know how if you, if you see someone walks in the street and smile like this and look around, there are two options here. One is so holy, or the other option that is a cuckoo. So the Ramchal is explaining what happiness is. He says, happiness is a arat panavit barach elav. Hashem, open the window and the light comes out on your face, on your soul. What's the opposite of happiness? Closing that window. The projector is not lighting on you. According to how much light Hashem reflects on you, that's how wonderful your feeling is every second of your life. So the more divine light, there is no sadness and no depression and no need for drugs, and for medication, and for alcohol, and for stupid music like a clown dancing in a club, jumping like a monkey. You don't need all of that. Why? You are full from inside. En lecharekanut. There's no emptiness. So, someone that is not coming close with Hashem, the Neshama is eager, hungry for that light. And when you do not supply your soul that light, that's a destruction to the soul. It's similar to the words of the Rambam in Ilchot Shuvat chapter 7, Alacha 7. The Ramchal speaks about someone that was wicked and became righteous. Yesterday he was wicked, today he became a Baal Shuvah. Stopped to be Mechalel Shabbat. If it was a girl that dressed not modest on the street, now she dressed modest. He used to eat not kosher, now he eats kosher. He used to not learn Torah, now he learns Torah. So he became 180 degrees different than what he was before. So the Rambam writes, Emesh, Haya, Meshukat, Meruchak, Sanu, Vetoeva. Yesterday, he was despicable, far away, hated, an abomination in the eyes of God. This is, by the way, the answer to all these modern, liberal, new-style rabbis today that destroys the world. You have to be very careful not to listen to those kind of modern ones. They come and tell you that Hashem loves everyone, and it doesn't matter if you're righteous or not. I had a 17 years old boy in Dallas, Dallas, Texas. Someone that, uh, Baruch Hashem, I made him Baal Tshuva, him and his wife, many years ago, maybe 10 years ago. Send me an email. I need your help. What? I sent your film, Torah and Science, to a boy, Jewish boy, from, uh, from Dallas. And immediately, immediately, he started to do Tshuva, after watching the film. He left the public school and went to Yeshiva. Problem is, he went to a very modern yeshiva. He doesn't know. What does he know? He's 17 years old. And he came to that rabbi over there and told him that he loves your lecture very much and he gets so inspired 
and he became Shomer Shabbat, and he wants to learn Torah. And what's the first thing that Rabbi is doing? Doing everything he can to convince him to stop listening to your lectures. And now, the boy told me that if that's how rabbis behave, maybe I was better off the way I was before. So he's about to leave the religion. This Rasha Merusha, Shem Reshaim Irkav, that called himself rabbi, doesn't care that he's going to go back to be Mechalel Shabbat. He said to him, what do you think? Hashem care if you Shomer Shabbat or you're not Shomer Shabbat? If you want, keep Shabbat. You don't want, don't keep. That's it. But don't, it's too uptight. This rabbi is too uptight. I started to explain to the boy and give him sources. I told him, we got to get you out of that place. It's not a yeshiva. It's a dead sentence to the soul. What normal parents send his kids with such a modern, rotten, liberal? Rasha Merusha Kazeh. There are thousands like him. It's not one or two. If there was one or two, no, seder. But uh, today, everywhere you go, there's politicians. They don't care. So you gotta be very careful. Don't let anyone fool you. This is the words of the Rambam, and that's the halacha in Shamaim. The Rambam said yesterday was hated, despicable, pushed away, and abomination. And today is loved and welcome, and close, and a friend. Everything changed. Yesterday Hashem hated you, now He loves you. Yesterday, yesterday pushed you away, now He's pulling you in. Yesterday you were abomination, now you are a friend. Yesterday you were not wanted, now you are wanted very much. Very much, Hashem is so happy from you, He's so proud of you. What changed? You started to listen to Him. You started to make changes. As soon as you made changes, Hashem finally can reflect that divine light on your soul. That's what he's anxious to do. That's why he created the world in first place. Until now, you did not allow him to do what he's so anxious to do. What's the purpose of life? Hashem is the source of the greatness, wanted to share with his greatness with others. That's why he created souls to benefit them and share the divine happiness and the divine light with those souls. But the souls have to earn it. And when a person closes the window, the light does not come in. Who suffer? The person and also Hashem. It's written, Bechol tzavatam, lo tzav. When a father child suffer, the child suffer, the father suffer just as much or more. Or the mother. So, now what's the purpose? Getting as close as possible to Hashem. What's the warning? Not to commit sins that take away this beautiful, wonderful light from the soul. And Hashem decreed that everyone who listens to His commandments is elevating his, himself one step after the other. Another one, another one, another one, another one. It keeps going higher and higher and higher. It's like the closer you go to the sun, let's say you are now a million miles away. You went up a hundred miles, you're a little bit closer. Another thousand miles, closer, closer, closer. You go closer to the light. So, when you commit sins, you go down the stairs. Lower, 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 further away from the light. And more obstacles are coming before you and Hashem, between you and Hashem. So, Rabotai, what do we see? We see that when a person commits sins, he has emptiness inside. Chisaron. You know what chisaron means? That you're missing something. What are you missing? You're missing that light. That's called reikanut. What does the Satan do? What's the Satan do? The Satan is convincing you that you can feel these missing feelings with new cars, with jewelry, with movies, with sport. Sport. Wow, my team won. Such happiness. That's obviously, obviously this entire thing is an illusion.